this is Dave with NTI Online, and today I'm going to walk you through the replacement procedure for a TRX-150 Combi uh, for replacing the IWC or the integrated water control that's at the bottom of the unit. Uh, you're going to start by removing the front cover. Uh, you'll want to have your boiler drained down, and you'll also want to drain down your domestic water. Now, I want to make this clear at first, you do not have to remove the plumbing beneath the boiler. Uh, all of that will remain attached. The one I'm using in the lab here is not actually connected, so I don't have to disconnect the piping, but it is not required. Those brass fittings remain in the boiler the whole time, and your piping also remains connected the whole time. Uh, what you want to start by doing is we're going to open up the cabinet. The part we're replacing is this black plastic part down the bottom here with the Grunfoss pump in it. And what I like to do, this uh, is sort of optional, but really I, I think it would be in your best interest to do it. Uh, I recommend removing the burner door assembly as if you were doing the cleaning, just to get it out of your way and give you more room to work and see. It only takes an extra minute or two and it will make your life a lot easier. So I'm going to do that next. We'll start by removing the air intake. Loosen these clamps off, you don't have to remove them completely. Grab that, give it a twist with a pull. Take this out, set it to one side. Once your gas line is isolated and disconnected below, you'll want to remove the gas line from the valve here. Now that we've removed those parts, unplug the gas valve, two wire connectors on the combustion fan motor, set them to one side, there's one on the pump here that you're going to want to disconnect, again push them to one side, there's two wires on the burner door, your flame rod, your igniter, and the ground wire for the igniter, and down on the IWC itself, You've got the return pressure temperature sensor on the right hand side. Disconnect that. Use caution when you're reconnecting these wires. It is possible to crisscross the flow sensor and the return temperature pressure sensor. So make sure you push these to one side and leave them where they're going to reconnect. Now that we've disconnected that, we'll go inside. I'm going to disconnect this one. And now that I've got this one off, that's our flow sensor disconnected, so I'm going to push that off to the left-hand side of the boiler so that I know that it goes there when I do it again. And from here, I've got four nuts on the burner door. These are 10 millimeter. If it's been a while since your boiler was last serviced, now is a good time to clean the combustion chamber as well. Carefully remove our door. The gasket here is typically in good condition, but inspect that for any sort of signs of cracking or turning white or going hard. Uh, if it looks like smooth black rubber, it's good to reuse. So I'm going to set this to one side. And that gives me just a lot more room to work and see what I'm doing inside the cabinet here. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the two screws that secure this uh, low voltage and high voltage electrical panel to the boiler. So those come in from underneath, push the door out of my way. So those are held in place with two sheet metal screws. And 
and that lets you just get a little bit more access so you can see what's happening inside and gives you a bit more room to work. Now that that's done, I'm going to go and disconnect my uh, diverting valve here. The easy thing to do here is to just take your finger, stick it underneath this, give it a pull up, and then the whole assembly will just pop off and out of your way. Uh, this is a part that will be reconnected or reinstalled on the new part when you put it in the boiler. I'll push that to one side. Next, we're going to move inside the cabinet, and I'm going to give you a close-up view of the various clamps and clips that you will be, need to disconnect and show you how those work, um, just so that there's no confusion when it goes back together. And then we'll move underneath and show you how to remove the screws and remove the IWC. Once you begin removing the IWC, there's two white clips. Uh, these hold the pipes in place. So to remove these, I'll start with the one on the right here. They're about a quarter turn, so it goes a quarter turn backwards. And when you go to reinstall this, you want to push the pipe all the way in place and it, it locks in place. Um, so this clip is always facing upwards. Once you've loosened it off, it will just come right off the pipe. I'll set it to one side. Now that that's done, you can take this pipe, push on it, and make sure it's loosened up uh, out of the IWC assembly here. You wanna be careful you don't use too much force though, because if you pull too hard, you can crack the connection at the bottom of the main heat exchanger. And if that happens, the only repair is to replace that heat exchanger. So it's not a bad idea to remove the clips at the top of the main heat exchanger. Metal clips like this. If you wiggle the pipe downwards so that it pops out of the main pressure vessel, These can be quite stiff when they get old. That gives me a bit more room to move this out and then give it a little twist and we'll pull this pipe out and set it to one side. When it comes to reassembling these, one thing that's going to make your life very difficult is these O-rings can get dry and sometimes dirty over time. When you go to reassemble it, take a small amount of silicon grease or plumber's grease, very lightly lubricate both O-rings, and it will make this go back together as if it was a brand new boiler. Now that we have one pipe out, we're going to go to the left-hand side there's a second one of those teardrop style clips, and if I push it back to the rear of the boiler, that unlocks it, and I'll pull it down to the front to lock it. So let's unlock it, slide it out of the IWC, and then lift it up and off the boiler. At this point, that's the two pipes removed. We have to now remove the relief valve connection. Now, if you have an older TX boiler, you may not have this pipe going through the cabinet, in which case you're free to just pull this directly out of the unit. Uh, this is a newer style, so we're going to remove this by taking the three screws out from underneath. They're a 3 8 uh, head sheet metal screw. Once those are out, we can pull this pipe out of the bottom, and then this will push off to one side, and we can then finish removing the IWC. Now that we're under the boiler, this is your relief valve connection. These are the three uh, screws that I was talking about earlier. You'll want to get a wrench uh, with a 3 8 uh, driver on it, and these should come out fairly easily. And the third one on this boiler must have been removed previously, but now that that's off, you're going to twist and pull, and this should come out relatively easily. Again, make sure this O-ring is a little bit greased. Uh, do not use petroleum grease. It has to be a silicon or a synthetic grease on here or a plumber's type grease, something that's O-ring safe, and it makes these go back together much easier. Now that we've removed the relief valve connection, the one thing that we do have to do underneath is remove the four screws that are holding the IWC in. So that requires a T25 screwdriver and these screw up into the plastic bosses on the bottom of the 
the IWC. And again, you do not have to remove these brass fittings or disconnect your plumbing. You do have to remove these four screws though. And once those are out, the IWC can be removed from inside. Pay attention to these two plastic squares. Those are used from the inside to lock the IWC in place before you put the screws in. Um, and you'll notice there's a little key slot that they fit in. Once we unlock those, it will allow the IWC to pull up and through. Until you unlock these, the IWC won't move. So now we'll move back inside the cabinet and show you the remaining procedure. Now that the relief valve connection is out and we've removed the four screws from the bottom, we can safely pull out this other pipe. So to get that out of our way and just twist it to one side. Again, watch you don't bend this too much. We don't want to put too much force on the bottom of the main pressure vessel. On the left and right hand sides, you have these white plastic locking clips and there's little plastic tabs on the side here. And the way you get those out is you'll take an Allen key. It's a six millimeter. And you lift this guy up. And as you twist that, you can see it pushes to one side. Make sure it's fully unlocked. It'll stop when it gets there. And that's that side unlocked. We'll do the same to the other side. And the little plastic clip on the other one is sort of inside here. So you reach your finger in, lift it up, twist that about 180 degrees to unlock it. And at this point, the IWC is ready to remove from the boiler. So you're gonna rock it back and forth and pull this up and out, and that's the IWC removed. These four O-ring connections remain in the boiler with your plumbing connected to them. Again, lubricate these O-rings when you go to put it back together. It does make it go back together more smoothly. Okay, when you go to reassemble your IWC, it's the reverse of disassembly. You're going to start by taking the new IWC, putting it in the boiler cabinet, line it up on these four brass connections. Again, pre-lubricate the O-rings. It does make life a lot easier. Once those are lined up, you want to firmly push down until you feel it seat in place. If it's giving you a little bit of trouble, make sure that you check these plastic clips and that they haven't partially closed. Sometimes they'll do that, and when you go to push it in, they're kind of preventing it from seating nicely. So we'll unlock this one. I think it's giving me a, a bit of a hard time. And when you've got it properly seated, or at least you think you do, turn these two clips clockwise. So once you've reseated the IWC, push it down until it feels like it's seated firmly. And the best thing to do next is to go back underneath and reinstall those four Torx screws to pull this down tight against the bottom of the cabinet. Once that's done, these locking clips should go back into place easily. I'm gonna reinstall the screws and then we'll come back inside the cabinet. Now that our four screws are installed and tight, these locking clips should go into place easily. So we'll give that a turn. Keep turning it till you get a little snap. That's this little plastic clip dropping back in place. We'll do the same to the other side. And that means this is locked in place and seated securely. If for some reason you're struggling to get it to sit in place, possibly these clips shifted while you had it apart and need to be fully unlocked before you reseat it. Double check your O-rings, make sure there's no debris or anything underneath the plastic. Uh, it should go together quite easily once it's uh, properly aligned. Now that we have that done, I'm going to start by reinstalling my supply connection. So I'll push that into the side of the unit until it makes a nice firm click. And I'm gonna take my locking clip, insert it over the pipe, and sometimes you have to play with these a bit, but it will line back up. And once it's lined up properly, it will lock in place like that. Give it a pull just to make sure that there is no looseness and that it's not coming out or improperly clipped. Then we'll do the return pipe on the other side. Now we'll reinstall the return pipe 
and you kind of put both connections in at the same time together. I've uh, pre-lubricated these to make them a bit easier to slide in place. So let's try and get the heat exchanger side started and give that a little wiggle and a twist. And now that that's in, pop in the other side, reinstall our locking clip on this one, the wide side, there's a wide side and a narrow side. The wide side goes to the top of the unit and it connects onto the black plastic. The narrow side goes over the uh, brass or copper pipe. Snap that on, just give it a little twist to make sure that it seats in place nicely. And next we're gonna reinstall the locking clip on the return side. So this one, you lean it a bit towards the back of the unit. You may have to hold the pipe like that and then make sure it's locked in place again. Give it a jiggle just to make sure that it's not gonna pop out on you. Now that that's done, we can finish reassembling the rest of the boiler. So we'll put the burner door back on, reinstall the gas line, put the two screws in the electrical panel cover. The important part next is when you go to refill uh, this device, you want to fill the domestic water slowly. And the best way to do this is to start, you've got your boiler water purged and filled. Then you want to open up a hot water tap and slowly open the cold water line to feed water through this assembly. And the reason we want you to go slow there is the flow sensor, which sits on the left-hand side here. If you have a severe water hammer from turning on the water full force, it can damage the sensor and cause it not to work. Uh, if you open the taps and slowly open the cold water feed, once the system is full, it will operate normally again and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, but it is susceptible to damage on that initial fill. So make sure that you Start with the hot water taps open, slowly open the cold water ball valve to allow water back into this. Once water is flowing at your taps, you can operate your taps and fixtures normally. So we're gonna reassemble this. And at that point, you have successfully replaced the IWC in your uh, TRX 150 combi boiler. The process is virtually identical if you have an FTV product. Uh, some of the piping will be in different locations, but the IWC assembly is basically the same part. Still has four screws underneath, a couple of pipes that clip into it, and the same wires. Hopefully that helped you. Thank you for watching NTI Online today. Uh, my name is Dave Nicholson. Have a good day.